Come, let's sing Jesus, 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 let's sing Jesus and every day children's way. Hey there, friends. I hope you had a wonderful hump day yesterday, and I hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. We're one day away from... Oh, I really want to say it, but I hope you're having a fantastic week so far. All this week, we've been talking about the plagues of the Bible. And we've been looking at different parts of the plagues, not necessarily the plagues themselves, but how sometimes scary things might actually be blessings in disguise. And today we want to talk about one of the things that really hurt the Egyptians and might even be hurting us today. Did you know that had Pharaoh just simply said yes to God's request that a lot of Egyptians, a lot of the places, the palaces, even people in Pharaoh's family wouldn't have been hurt. And do you know what Pharaoh's problem was? Well, the Bible would tell us, and even in Exodus 3 we can read, that Pharaoh had a pride issue. Now, pride is where you puff yourself up and ride along the way. Just take the UFF out of puff, put it in front of the ride, pride. You're riding on a high horse, is what we would say. And Pharaoh had a problem with pride. You too might find yourself in the same situation as Pharaoh where you just don't want to listen to anybody. Let me give you some examples. Where Pharaoh was challenged with a god, so he thought, where Pharaoh was challenged by God, Pharaoh thought, this has got to be a fake person because I'm the only god here on earth. And he's thinking of the Egyptian gods, and we talked about this earlier in the week. But what we find ourselves from time to time is when you look all throughout the plagues and you see that Pharaoh gets worse and worse and worse and worse after every single plague, it finally takes him losing something that he held very, very dear and precious to himself. And it ended up costing Pharaoh ultimately his life, because even after Pharaoh let the children of Israel go, he ended up following the children of Israel and went back on his word. And God said, after ten times, that's not going to happen. And ultimately, it didn't turn out well for him. But before we talk about how we can learn from the life of the high road of pride, let's sing a song with our friend Paul, and I'll see you in a few seconds. Let's go sing. Sing Christian songs with Paul. Thanks, E.T. Hey, kids, would you like to sing another Christian song? How about Footprints of Jesus? Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footsteps falling lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Great job, kids. We'll see you next time. Hey there, friends. You did a beautiful job singing with Paul. Paul's very happy with you. I'm very happy with you. God is very, very happy with all of you for singing and giving praise to God's name. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Paul. We love it very much. Now, when we left, we were talking about the high road of pride. And specifically, we want to look at the scary road of pride. You see, in order to be prideful, you've got to think that maybe you can handle everything. You don't need help. You don't need help from your mommy or daddy or from your friends, your grandma and grandpa, because it's your life, right? So you know what you're doing, right? The problem is with that is let's imagine if the Israelites tried to make it out of Egypt without God. Now, we talked about yesterday if had God not been with the Israelites, more than likely bad things would have happened to them, even worse than what happened to them before. Moses may not have ever come back to Egypt, and the plagues may have never happened, and the Egyptians might have ultimately taken out the Israelites, and that wouldn't have been good. But you know, if we were to think that way, 
Had the Israelites tried to escape without God's help, could they have done it? Well, maybe by human force. But what do we see from the Bible account happening to the children of Israel because God was with them? You see, when we try to live life without God, that makes things a little rough. And from Pharaoh's perspective, from his view of what was going on, he really thought he had everything in control. And friends, that's something we need to think about as well. You know, there's some things in life you're not going to be able to control. And when you try to control those things, when God has said you're not going to have any control over these things, you're in for a world of hurt and you're going down the scary road of pride. I wouldn't want to go through this life without God by my side and God helping me and guiding me through His Word and even those that He's blessed my life with, with a mother and a father, grandparents, my friends, my cousins, my aunts and uncles, my preacher, the elders, all my friends that are Christians and even those friends that God has blessed me with in the world that I can help bring to Christ. All of these have come about because God has been with me and helped me through my life. And friends, God is doing the very same thing for you today. The only thing you have to do is step off the scary road of pride and step onto the road of humility. Let God be the God of your life. And as we talked about yesterday, God will deliver you from all things that happen in your life. Now friends, that's all the time we have today. Let's go work on our memory work and I'll see you next time. Let's go. Hey there friends. I hope you're having a fantastic week and I hope you're ready for your memory work this week. Now until Friday, we'll say the verse once together and then I want you to say the verse to me. Are you ready to say it together? Let's go. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Now I want you to say the verse back to me. Are you ready? Go ahead. That was wonderful. You did a great job. That was much, much better than yesterday. Now keep working on your memory work, and by Friday, you'll know even more memory work than your brother, or your sister, or your dog, or your cat, or your toad, or your flies, or any other of the ten plagues, because we know siblings are plagues, so are pets. Now friends, that's all the time that we have today. I'll see you next time. See you later, friends. Come, let's sing Jesus, of Jesus, Jesus, of Jesus, Jesus, of Jesus, Jesus, let's sing Jesus, and every day children's way.